Hey, welcome back Design Squad. And in this video, we're gonna continue on mobile menus and making mobile patterns in Axure. And, you know, if in a previous video, I showed you how to make a couple of menus, like so, let's say, and then we can swipe them away, you know, kind of like a simple widget in the mobile side. And I showed you a couple of ways to do so, like this, for example, it's up to you. What we didn't cover is making a menu which basically pops out multiple out items out of that, like bubbles, right? It's quite uncommon, but, you know, just having a menu button like this might be useful for you to know how to do, let's say, material design menu, right? It doesn't have to be this crazy uh, type of menu call to action element it could be just a simple add button which is always floating so i'm gonna show you how it's done right so from get go we're gonna need to edit our existing uh state you can start from scratch if you're following this um, i'm just gonna make a copy from my existing state i'm gonna shift to outline because some of you asked to see the outline like the layer list i have which is totally fine and next, I'm just gonna delete the menu thing. I'm gonna break away the first state so we don't need the di dynamic panel anymore. I'm gonna delete that menu and I'm gonna keep it like this. And that's about it. I'm gonna maybe make it this full screen so you can see exactly what's going on here. Um, and maybe just shift it like so simple like that and if I preview you're gonna see that it's a simple window and nothing can happen now but I'm gonna add an icon for a menu here so let's go and just minimize this and, and shift item by item using the sketch plugin for Axure I'm gonna convert those two bad boys into a dynamic panel I'm gonna show you in a minute why but let's call this menu CTA so you can see in our outline, this is where it stands. And next thing what I'm gonna do is making it sticky so it overlaps uh, the elements. And I'm gonna show you a preview of what I mean by that. So I'm gonna go into style and pin to browser option. And here we're gonna pin it to left and bottom and then set the margin, let's say to 20 pixels on both and make it 20 so it's 2020 and it's going to remain in that corner and to preview it i'm just going to expand this background so meaning we have more content and this content can scroll up and down let's preview really quick and you're going to see that our button is always there even if i scroll up or down it's still going to be there which is pretty neat i might just need to add the bigger shadows just increase the dimensions because the shadow might get cut out simply like so and we're gonna go ahead and make it in different states so this is our default states for a menu icon and this is gonna be our active state in the second one and in the second one all we have to do is really just reduce the shadow to nothing because it's clicked in let's say and we're gonna fill it with let's say green let me just then copy icon by icon across our mediums and this is X so this icon is gonna return us back into the existing state and that's exactly what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna use the hotspot so it just overlays everything it doesn't miss anything out and on click I'm gonna set panel state of menu CTA to default kaboom and then I'm gonna copy the same hotspot in the default view and here instead of default i'm going to select to active so now we created a switch between these two bad boys i actually might just do shift it a bit down below and you're going to see why so it's going to look like it we are pushing it down might not be obvious on desktop but on mobile it should be pretty clear that it's now pushed down a little bit maybe it's too much but it's okay and that's it, we created basically a state uh, for menu switch. Now we just need those three bubbles to come out and be available to access anytime, right? Cool, let's do that. We are gonna have to import bit by bit, just like we did with a previous bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start copying in the bubbles. 
So now I have icons. I see one icon got misplaced. I guess it's the vector issue, but I'm going to leave it for now as is um, purely because of time constraint. But as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and then group those bad boys into new menu items. So this is going to be M1, let's say, keeping it really simple. I'm going to call that M2 and then I'm going to call the last one to M3, M3, like so. You can either make them visible right away, but what I want to do is make them explode. So they maybe, you know, come in into place out of that central location. And if you remember from my previous videos, that's what I like to do. Then I don't know where the thing should be headed. And I'm going to note it down. What I need to know down is for these three bad boys, the final destination. And I'm creating a, a simple matrix like so. I just need X and Y axis for the, you know, the end point. And then the, the, this point is going to be easy because it's that basically with 20 for x, y, for 5, 8, 3. And for these, let's say this is 24, 5, 1. This is 90 for x coordinate to 1. And that's 1, 1, 0, 5, 8, 7. Boom. That's what I captured. And that's exactly what I'm going to input in order to animate them smoothly and nicely if the user clicks on it. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and just drag them in and then just hide it one by one. Hide, hide and then hide again. So we start in that central location. I can also just drag it under it like so, so that we come up from under it. Some users might not be able to see it, but that's OK. And then in the hotspot in the interactions, I'm going to add a few statements, which is basically show and one. And then we're going to fade it, let's say 600 or maybe like 800. And then we also going to move it to that, that destination. So M1, let's see if I can find M1. Two, we're moving it to exact coordinates, which is 24. I noted down and another one is 501. We can animate it so we can ease in, let's say. We can bounce it, let's say. Let's try bouncing it for the sake of it. Let's see what happens then. And actually, I'm just not going to do an animation here so that we animate like so. And let's test it. Boom. As you can see, it's pretty cool. I think it works for now and it, it looks pretty nice. Um, I'm just going to copy those two behaviors paste it a couple of times. So you see, uh, I'm showing again. So, okay, so I show M1, I move M1. I show M2 now, M2. And then I want to move M2 as well, but in different coordinates. That's the most important bit. And different coordinates are for this one, it's 50 and 5 to 1. Again, bouncing. You can also maybe make one by one if you want to, or all of them at once. I'm gonna show you both ways. I think it's pretty neat to know both options of how you can do that. Uh, and three, and that's one one zero, and that's five eight seven. Boom. So I'm gonna show you how it's when we are all at once and they're working nicely. Oops. I think I didn't capture that right. I'm mistaken by my own uh, handwriting here. That second one moved to 50. It could be that it's 90. Okay, let's let me try 90. That might be a bit too much. Yeah, it was 90. But as you can see, it, then it pops up. If I close, I want to get, bring them back in. So I'm going to take care of that now. All we need to do is just take those move elements, copy them, and in the active one, just paste them in. And here I'm going to move them to that central, which is 24 by 587. And we don't need to bounce. We can just do like a linear animation and really quickly, let's say 400 like so. Actually, I'm going to delete the other two. Just copy this out. You know, we can add another target and free the same way. 
and that should be done. Let's see if that works. Boom, bounces in, boom, comes back in. Pretty neat, isn't it? Maybe that's the thing you're looking for. I don't know about the usability of it. You would need to user test it. Again, it's a bit questionable if you ask me, but maybe you can add some text to clarify what is what to the users. But it's pretty neat, I think. I'm just gonna lastly show one more thing. If you want to kind of delay it a little bit, you can then add waiting. So it's like it bounces one by one, right? So let's say this, maybe you wait, I don't know, maybe 400. So that's a bit less than half a second and just push it in between. So I show and move one and a copy and then I show and move two and then third. And let's see how that would work. Again, just playing around now. One, two, three. Maybe that's the behavior you're looking for. So that's how you would do it. But again, you can play around. It's pretty flexible. And as you can see, it works pretty well. And in a mobile environment, that would also might feel quite natural. I hope this was useful as per usual. Give a like, subscribe to this channel, share with your friends who like this type of stuff or if they're in product design or UX, I think they would find it useful. Stay tuned for more material and I'll see you next time.